Wrecker. Shoot out the window. That's an order. Don't you fucking do it, Wrecker. Save yourselves. Get out of here. Get you know I'm about to. It's gotta happen. There aren't many things in this world that are more satisfying than getting something new. Think about it. Can you remember the last time you smelled the scent of a brand new book? <sighs> Never gets old. Anyway, games aren't any different. All you want to do is get on your console or PC and try it out as soon as you can. If you've ever seen our videos before, let us give you a warm welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, we are Gamer Use and we are always creating new and improved gaming content. So definitely consider hitting that subscribe button if you like that kind of stuff. Now, without further ado, here are 8 things you've probably done when buying a new video game. Number 8. Boot it up. Hey kids, are you ready to boot it up? Like, duh, of course, you'd boot it up. Don't you want to try out all the delicious, tantalizing, and delectable gameplay that awaits you? Initiating system one. That's literally all you can do when you have a digital copy of a game whether you're on PlayStation, Xbox, or PC. I really don't think there's anything else that you can do with it, unless you like keeping digital copies of the games on your hard drive. You know, they'll collect digital dust or something, right? Even with physical copies, I don't really see the point of leaving it be. Or unless you're one of those collector dudes who owns like every single physical copy of every video game that's ever existed. You know, that doesn't actually sound that bad. Imagine how much some of those older games must be worth now. Hmm. Number 7. Skip the tutorial. You did it. The weighted companion cube certainly brought you good luck. However, it cannot accompany you for the rest of the test and, unfortunately, must be euthanized. Please escort your companion cube to- You euthanized your faithful companion cube more quickly than any test subject on record. Congratulations. Who needs a tutorial? I most definitely do not need one, and I don't think you do either. We've been playing video games for ages. We know exactly what the controls are, and we sure as heck know how to use them. That being said, I guess there are a lot of games where you shouldn't skip the tutorial. In fact, there are games where you can't skip the tutorial. As painful as that sounds, they do exist. We're talking about you, Demon Souls. And well, there are some games where you don't even want to skip the tutorial. Take for instance, Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. This awesome parody type DLC is drenched with 80s action hero fanatics and so much cyberpunk. Nope, nope, not that cyberpunk, nope. Anyway, you'll get a heap load of synthwave, which would make you think the game was definitely not made in 2013. Number 6, watching the intro cinematic. Whenever you get a new game, you want to be able to experience it to the fullest. As the first credits roll in, there usually is an intro cinematic that follows. This hypes up the game for you, not knowing what a wonderful world lay beyond that loading screen. Or a glitchy mess that'll just piss you off. To be honest though, this one's a little personal for me. I made sure I watched the intro cutscene of a new game every single time. Number 5. Tell your friends. Now this one's subjective, depending on if you even have any friends. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I don't have any friends either. 
but you have a whole bunch of digital friends who'd love to hear about the new game you just bought. Which reminds me, hop onto our Discord. The link is on our YouTube page, on the banner, and in the description. We'd love to hear from you. Anyways, I digress. Showing off your new game to your friends is something that we've all done and we kinda still do it even now. Number 4. Change the settings. This one's for all my PC gamer fanatics out there and maybe just a handful of console players as well. This really makes sense when you have a low-end PC. Ladies and gentlemen, I have got to tell you, lag is a real thing, it is not a myth. Your best bet if you do have a low-end PC is to go to your settings before you start a new game and lower all your graphic settings just so you get a decent frame rate. Unless you want it to look something like this. This one's also for all you console players out there who need to change their settings to play inverted? Wow, I I mean, I, I can't even say it. Why? Why would you even... You know what? Never mind. I, I don't even want to know. Number three, forgetting the time. So you've got your new game, you've loaded it up, you start playing it, and BAM! Five hours just passed without you even realizing it. Of course, this solely depends on whether the game is that good, but considering the awesome titles we've been getting over the past few years, this happens more often than not. Some of us have literally gone AWOL when we get a new game, often forgetting all about the outside world for weeks at a time. Steady, one at a time. Steady, steady, steady. Steady. Steady night. Making sure you squeeze out every single ounce of gameplay. Number two, calling in sick. For all of us who have jobs and responsibilities and everything else, you've got to take time to yourself and there isn't anything greater than getting a new game to play. Sometimes you just don't want to do anything but play a new game and stop worrying about everything else. This isn't really the best thing to do so you call your boss. Hey Mick, so... <clears throat> I'm not really feeling good today. Haha, <laughs> <laughs> works like a charm every single time. Uh, uh, <clears throat> no, no, <clears throat> I, I didn't say anything. Once you get your day off, there's a wonderful world of video games that awaits you. Number one, canceling plans. This one's more or less an extension of the last one, but it's probably something that's done the most. Considering you had any friends and you had plans with them, the first thing you do is cancel those plans because getting a new game trumps all of that. You don't want to go out and meet people when you have the latest Assassin's Creed game just laying there, itching for you to play it. You want to play that game and you know it. There's nothing more satisfying than playing your new game all weekend. That's it for our list. Do consider hitting that like and subscribe button. We're always releasing new and improved content. So let us know. What did you do when you bought a new game?